Today I'm going to show you how you can replace tmux with westerm using the right configuration. And so this configuration file here, I'm going to show you and go through. I can create tabs. I can split vertically, horizontally. I can resize. I can close my splits, close my tabs. And I can navigate my tabs with ease. There's a little indicator here that shows me that my leader key is active and that Westerm is listening for commands. So first I have this Capuchin theme set, which is this nice purple. I have the Western font set to JetBrains Mono, which is a very popular coding font. And then I have this window decoration set to resize. I think in general, you do need to comment this out because you do need those three buttons here. The reason I'm not using them is because I'm using a window manager. So I have other means to close um, or minimize my terminal. I have my leader key set to alt Q for ergonomic purposes. Generally, the default for tmux is control B. Uh, a lot of people use caps lock because it's a single key and often not really used to capitalize letters anymore. So it's a good choice. I have my timeout set to two seconds, which means that if I press the leader key and I wait two seconds, then Western stops listening for commands. These hotkeys here are basically the tmux defaults, right? So C means create a new tab. X means close a tab or pane. B and N are to navigate uh, before and next on my tabs. Pipe is used for uh, vertical splits. And then dash is used for horizontal splits. I can navigate through my splits with Vim navigation keys. So leader K goes up, leader H goes left, etc. I can resize my panes with the arrow keys here. So if I go leader left, leader right, and I go down and I go leader up, leader down, I can resize those panes. You can also set how much you want to resize them by. So you can micro adjust this number if you'd like. This for loop here is used to map my number keys to the tab IDs on the bottom. So if I have a few tabs, and I want to go to the zeroth tab, I just go leader zero, and I'm there, leader two, and I'm on the second tab. I have my bottom bar, I have the bar set to the bottom. I'm not using the fancy tab bar. If you want to know how that looks like, I can show you real quick, it kind of looks like that, but I'm not using that one. I have my tabs indices zero based, which means that the first tab here is zero. And so this piece of code here that I wrote is used to indicate whether the leader key is active. So first we're listening on an event, whether the status is updated. So whether the leader key is active or not active, whether Western is listening for the commands, we can actually check for several things. So first of all, I define two, uh, two strings. One is prefix and one is solid left arrow as empty strings. Then I check if the leader key is active, then the prefix I set it to an empty character concatenated with the ocean wave UTF-8 character, which is this little. So if I press leader, there's actually an empty character here concatenated with the wave character. And the solid left arrow character is right here. So you can see that little arrow on the bottom left. And then that text is then set on using the set left status function, right? So on update right status, whenever the status updated, whether the leader key is active or not active, then this text is set to the prefix and the solid left arrow. The last thing I want to mention is the arrow colors, right? So if you notice that left arrow key color blends in nicely with the dark color here, but if the window active tab is set to zero, then the default color will actually be this purple color. So if I go to the zero tab and I press leader, you'll notice this arrow key becomes pink and blends in with this color. Now note, note that these colors I have set only work for the Capuchin theme. If you have 
If you'd like to use another theme, you'd have to adjust these colors for your own needs. That's pretty much all I use Western for. Of course, there's a lot more features. So if you'd like, you can actually go to the Western docs and check out check it out because it's very comprehensive and it's what I've used to create this configuration. And I'm going to share this configuration on GitHub so you can duplicate the configuration to your own needs. The last thing I want to mention is where to put this configuration file. So you actually want, want it in your home folder dot config slash western and name it western dot lua. Then western will automatically detect your configuration and load it in. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe so that I could make more content. And thanks a lot for watching.